All right, so now uh, we've drawn our chart, and here's our little chart that we drew with just some hard-coded numbers. And ideally, we want to read these numbers from our weight log, right? So uh, that log is stored in this file. If you go through the Android debug monitor here, it's in this weightlog.csv. So I'm going to take this to, just to show you how we can retrieve and save files back and forth. I'm going to take this file and copy it to my desktop from my virtual device here. And these two buttons let you do that. Pull from a device, push back onto the device. So I'm going to pull that file and save it to my desktop, weightlog.csv. And then I'm going to open that in uh, Excel. Since it's a CSV file, it'll open automatically for me. And here's the the uh, the one weight log that I had saved. All right. So one nice thing is I can I can create a bunch of these uh, just by dragging down. So we have some more things to plot, and it actually increments in Excel the date and the time and the weight by one as a default. So that's pretty good. So we'll we'll just have, uh, what, 14 different logging entries here. We'll save it back to the desktop. And now we will push that back onto the device. And so we push. We gives us a browser window. We can look up the file, uh, open that, and it pushes it back up. Now we have 320 bytes on the file, a lot bigger because we have 14 of those guys. All right, so now uh, I need a way to read that data and use that data to plot my chart. So reading a file is not nearly as easy as writing to a file. Reading a file in Java is complicated. So we're going to create a new method that uh, will just be used for this class. And I'm going to call it read weight log. And for this, we need some, uh, well, I'm going to create a string, which is the file name, just so I have one place to access that. And I might put this in a resource string later on. That would be a good place to put it. Uh, but for now, we're just going to read that. That's the name of the log file that was written on the previous activity. Uh, then we need to use this file input uh, stream class to, and of course we have to import that package, and we're going to call it input stream, and we'll set this to null to start with. So that's a, a similar to Ruby in a point in that we have to have a, a file descriptor that's going to point to the file that's on the, the disk of the Android device. So then uh, we're going to call an input stream that we just created. And we're going to call this open file input method and give it the file name. Right, and it says unhandled exception, file not found exception. Right, so that tells you that we need to put this in a try catch block. So we have to put a try around this and a catch, which gets an exception. that we can do something with. Um, so 
So we can call our logger for an error. Remember how we can print a, an error to the log string? Of course, we have to import the log package. And I'm going to call it uh, my chart uh, just so I can look at it and print out the message from the error exception. All right, so that's the, the catch portion of that. All right, now we still have to take this information and do something with it. So this input stream is now an open file descriptor, like in Ruby, uh, pointing to this open file. So this input stream is an object that we can do stuff with. So um, we need a place to read into. We need a buffer, a string of, of predefined length so that we can read the data from the disk into this memory, okay? So everything from the disk is considered a byte. Uh, we're going to read bytes at a time. So we're going to create this byte, sorry, byte uh, array that is going to, I'm going to just call it reader. And we're going to create a new byte array. And we have to tell it how big we want it. So. Uh, we have to have a buffer big enough to be able to read the file. And we need all of the data points, at least the way we're doing it this way, uh, we need all the data points from the file. So we need to read the entire file in into one big byte array. All right, so there is a method on the input stream called available that says how many bytes does this file have? So in our case, it was uh, 330 bytes. So this byte array is going to be 330 bytes long. So it's big enough to hold the entire file in one in one chunk. Yes. Yes. That that calls an internal function for the Android operating system to tell you how, how big the file is, just how many bytes it is. All right, and then we can do a while loop, and we have to do this in a while loop because the operating system might not read the entire file in one chunk if it's large. It might have to read it in several pieces. And so we're going to call the read method on the input stream. That's like calling a file dot gets, you know, we're going to read a bunch of stuff. And we're going to read it into our reader buffer. Right? And we're going to keep reading until I get to the end of the file, which is a, a negative one here. When input stream dot read gets a negative one, it's it says I've got to the end of the file. That's basically read into my reader buffer continuously until I get to the end of the file. And there's nothing in this while loop. Uh, it's just a, a, a blank while loop that's going to keep reading until it's gone through the entire file. Does that make sense? Uh, the number of bytes that it read. Yeah. It, all, it keeps appending on the end of this reader right All right. So my reader now has this long, uh, my reader, reader array uh, now holds the entire file. All right. So now, it's one big long string of bytes with carriage returns in it and commas in it and time delimiters and all kinds of stuff, right? So I need to be able to look through this and read, convert it first of all into lines. I want to convert into separate lines. 
uh, because I know I've got different fields in my lines. I've got date, comma, time, comma, weight, right? So the first thing I want to do is, is uh, convert this into a, uh, a bunch of lines. So we use this other routine called a scanner, which I have to import that package as well. Oops. Scanner, uh, I'm gonna, just going to call it S, nice good variable name. And we're going to create a new scanner uh, from this, this reader. All right, so the problem is that reader is a byte array and scanner requires a string. So I have to create a new string from the reader byte array, pass it to my new scanner, and now scanner is an object that lets me walk through the array, the uh, string, looking for different characters, all right? And I can do that by setting a delimiter on my scanner. There's a bunch of methods on this scanner object. And what would I look for uh, to separate out the string into a bunch of lines? Okay, right, backslash n. So uh, in Java, I have to use two backslashes to get a real backslash n because uh, just a slash n is, it's hard to explain. The, the, yeah, <laughs> the first slash uh, tells it, because I want a full backslash, not just a character turn. I want this, this string slash n. So I have to use another slash to escape the first slash. All right. Right, right. Right. All right, so isn't that nice? Right, and uh, in in this Android OS, this is basically a Linux operating system. So it's just a sing. It's not DOS. It doesn't have character turn and a line feed. It's just a, the the well. In this case, it's actually a, just a line feed. Uh, so. This is interesting. Of course, this worked on my other one. So let's go. Let's go look at that up. It's not s dot delimiter. It's s dot use delimiter. All right. Sorry. So it's s dot use delimiter. That tells it that our scanner, as we walk through this array, is going to give us a line at a time. So we're going to have 14 of these lines, right? So then we need to have a while loop to walk through this. And the S is a scanner, and they have these nice methods called has next. All right? So while my string has a next object, I want to do something with that object. All right? While that means while there's, it's, it's going to give me back the first line, that means it, it can find something that has a delimiter of a slash n at the end of it. So while I have something in my string that I haven't looked at yet, I'm going to go through this loop and look at each one. So I need to, I'm, I'm going to be getting a whole line, meaning my date, time, comma, well, date, comma, time, comma, wait, right? I'm going to get three different fields. So I need to take that string. That, that string is going to be everything up until the line feed. And I need to break that. How would I do that in Ruby? How would I, as, as soon as I say it, the split, right? I'm going to split those three fields based on a comma, right? And Java has the same concept of a split. So first, I need to save this value. Uh, I'm going to get the next line. This doesn't actually get the line. That just tells me I have something. That's a Boolean expression. So I need to get that. So I need a new variable called temp up here, which is going to be a string. I'm going to save the string in this temp variable. <sighs> just to show you, I, I don't have to do that. I could, I could do it all in other things. Uh, 
then I'm going to say uh, split my temp string. And what, what do you think split returns? An array, just like the split in Ruby, right? So I need a string array up here for my little a. And this is just to show you uh, all of the steps. I could put this all into one line. So I split it. I now have an array. And what is the, the one that I really care about? In my case, I'm not going to deal with the dates yet. I'm just, I just care about the weight. So what's, what would be the third element in this array? What element in this would be a sub 2, right? So uh, a sub 2 gives me the um, element of the weight. So that's, that's a string. Remember, again, anything we read from the user, whether it's a keyboard or a file, is a string. So, but we, we need that as what? An integer. So we have to use the parse int. Of that string value, right? That gives us a actual number, and then we need to add that to our array uh, that we had up here. So remember, we created this little array called wait list. So I'm going to move this out of my on draw and make this uh, part of my properties for the entire class which essentially makes it global for the entire class, right? The entire class can now access my wait list variable. So my read log now can access that same wait list variable. So I need to call my wait list dot add an element. Oh, I lost my of parsing it as an integer so that this is basically adding it to my waitlist array, right? Each element, I've, I've gone through all the splitting and converting and finding the value, and I add it to the array that I'm going to play with later, that I'm going to actually draw on the screen, okay? Isn't that fun? Now, what's the last thing uh, we need to do here with this scanner is we need to close the scanner, just like a file. All right. Yep. Yes. Yes. It does. And it, and you're right. Uh, in my when I'm logging this, if we go back to my logger. Uh, I added a carriage return at the end of every line so that the next line starts at the beginning, right? So there will be a carriage return at the end of my last one. Yes. Good question. Though. All right, so I need to close the scanner. That's the scanner part. A lot of work. I could, you could see how I could split this up and not have these variables, right? Anytime you have a variable on the left and a variable on the right, I could do this all in one piece, right? I could do an s.next.split and then an integer.parse on all of that, right? You see how you could do that. But anyway, I wanted to show you that how each piece was done. So in a try-catch, uh, there is another piece of a try-catch. What is that called? You guys know that? A finally, right? There's a finally method at the end of, an, of a try-catch because what do we need to do with our files when we're done with them? We need to close them. So we need to do an, uh, we need to check to see if it's closed. So I'm going to say if input stream is not equal to null, that means that we successfully opened the file. We don't want to close it if we never really opened it. Uh, so if we got some error, uh, this finally is going to happen even even if an error happens. So if it's not if it's 
not equal to null, that means that we have something and we need to do an input stream dot close but again it tells us that that's an unhandled ex IO exception so what do we have to do with that? Put it in a try catch, right? Try, we're going to try to do our closing of the file and if we have an error it's going to be of type IO uh, exception of course we need to import that package holy cow IO exception and we need to call it something E is the standard and let's just log that error out like we did up above call it chart again and we'll log out the message that we got from the error string so we have a try catch inside of a try catch at the end of our finally here isn't that fun make sure all of our parentheses are closed correctly I mean our braces and that's it see how simple that was oh my god that was painful any questions on what we did here? Uh, just to be clear, yeah. it converts the bytes into a string with a scanner, right? There's right here. No bytes. Okay. Yeah, right here we had to convert the reader byte array into a string because scanner only works on a string. Okay. Um, that makes I'm sense. I was wondering where the conversion from bytes to yeah. characters. Yeah. Right. That it would happen right here. Okay. All right. So now at the end of this what did our read weight log actually do for us? What did we modify in here? Added a, Added a bunch of weights, right? So our wait list now has the array of stuff that I can graph on the screen. In theory, in theory right? So I would call my read weight log up here uh, probably before I do anything with my view because my view is going to actually draw the stuff, right? So I need to have my, my list read into memory before I draw my chart. So I'm going to call my read weight log method on my onCreate. All right. Right. I'm, I'm skipping that whole issue. I leave that to you guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you would need that too. You wouldn't have to have an X and a Y. I'm only reading the Y and I'm making my X a fixed 10 spots, right? So just to make it easier. But, but yeah, you would need both of those. So here is where I'm actually drawing the chart. So I don't want to actually just draw some random stuff. I want to loop through my array, right? And and uh, actually draw this stuff to the screen. So let's take, let's comment, let's just delete all of these actually. We don't need any of this stuff. So I need to loop through my list and I, I kind of do that here already, right? I've, I've uh, looped through this already. This is my wait list. I'm going to draw a line from one to the other. And so actually this should work. So let's uh, let's try this. See if it'll actually work. Run it. Amazingly, no errors. I <laughs> know, I know, but it didn't compile. No compile errors. <laughs> Almost. Don't get. Don't let that fool you. <laughs> All right. So I don't want to save my weight. I'm just going to go straight in the weight chart, which will launch the new activity, read the log file, and go through this this whole canvas panel drawing system. And it should read from the log. Ah, and we got a nice crash. Isn't that great? So let's go see what we have here. No, 
All right, so I got a fatal exception. That's not good. Holy moly. I got this WM Extractor album art. No such file or directory. Did I name my, my file something different? Wait underscore log dot CSV. That's right. Wait underscore log dot CSV. So that's right. On draw line seventy one. So my wait list invalid index zero, size is zero. So at this point, my log didn't read right, right? My on draw is not, my wait list is not done yet. All right, so the problem is that as soon as the set content view happens, it it causes the on draw to execute. Right? As soon as I set the layout, the on draw is going to get called. So I really need to call my read wait log above that. All right, I need to make sure that I have my data in place even before I set my content view. All right? Guaranteed to work this time. <laughs> I'm so confident. Uh, yeah, exactly. I think that uh, it's possible that I have to, uh, I should be doing that beforehand as well. But what happens is it, it draws it, it probably draws it several times. It sets up the view and then it uh, calls on draw again. So it's going to call this, it calls this on draw several times. So. It when you reorient it too, right. It, see? So much better. What the heck? Same error. So it has a problem here. It was not uh, actually reading my my. Uh, I got an invalid int of 180. So let's go look at that file. Let's let's open this instead of Excel. Let's open it in uh, Notepad. Yeah, see, we've got, we've got the return. So there's a carriage return at the end. Yeah. Well, it found this quote. Well, yeah. it, w the problem is, see, that's interesting. It's got the end of line. See, it's got a 180 and an end of line. So, but uh, again, I didn't have to do that at home. But let's go see. Uh, so let's let's use the debugger. And it's obviously in my reading here. So let's let's put a breakpoint here and let's debug this guy instead. Ah. Uh, Closes my monitor. Okay. Work my way back. It's even slower on the debugger.
All right, so here we go. Let's look at our A value once it comes up. Collecting data, there we go. So here's my A. And so it's got a, a, a line feed at the I mean a carriage return at the end, slash R here. Um, and that's not right. I wonder I wonder if uh, yeah. So my temp is in fact the first one. It found that. Still has the carriage return, yeah. It's because we modified this on a Windows box, and the Windows file now, Excel file, has carriage returns and line feeds in it. And my Mac doesn't, so that's why I didn't have that problem. Yet another reason to buy Mac, just saying. So the problem was our modification. Had had I just created a bunch of these in uh, in my application, it would have written the right line feed and read the right line feed, right? So I, I really need to modify that file to remove the, the uh, carriage return here. Don't, the problem is, I'm, I'm, yeah, that's why I need to modify the text file itself. Because I modified, I read it from the device, modified it, wrote it back to the device. And that's where I added the carriage return. Had, it, had I just been using my weight logger button, it would have written it correctly. Does everybody see that? Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I'm sure there's a way in here somewhere, right? Um, so I need to... You see, I have a CRLF. I just need a uh, an LF in here. I, yeah, no. Yes, an LF is what a, a Linux uses. So there should be a way inside of here to convert that. Um, we might be able to. So if I search for uh, slash r slash n and replace it with a slash n, there we go. All right, now we can save this guy, uh, push it back. So let's stop our debugger. <laughs> I have to now open my monitor again so I can save the file back. Wasn't this fun? Right, it would have been better, yeah. But I wanted the auto increment, you know, to have, but, so obviously, I did that at home and it worked fine, so. Once again, I suppose I should be testing on a Windows box all the time. So let's uh, push a file, wait log, Well, it doesn't seem like it should be the same bytes. Yeah, see, it's not right. That's the problem. I just, I just did this, so. There we go. Now we've got it uploaded. So now I should be able to run this guy again. I'm just running, so it's not going to use it anyway. Darn well better work. I was so confident before. 
but that was that was good to find. So you'll run in you'll run into something like that. There we go. Check it out. A steadily increasing weight. Remember it had a one a one pound increase over time. Beautiful. I lost my, I uncommented the wrong thing out here. I lost my axes. But, uh, yeah, I don't, these are the ones I meant to comment out. So, any questions on uh, reading from a file? Wasn't that fun? <laughs> you like that? <laughs> with, this, with the moonrise up here or something? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Look at that. Is that beautiful? This person is obviously not losing weight. All right. Any questions on reading from the file? Wasn't that fun? They've come backwards. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's why I leave it up to you guys. You're going to have to figure out a scale for the X. No, you'd have to draw it. So, obviously, it's it's complicated. I wanted to show you how, how to draw, all right? So this, this will let you draw. You'd have to put these little marks here, right, and the marks here, and put your draw some text at each level here to show your date scale and uh, make it all look pretty, right? Quite a bit of work to do that. So that's such a common issue that tomorrow we will show you the... Uh, the chart engine here, which is a free, uh, it's open source, uh, Java library that all you have to do is pass it a list of data to graph, and it does it for you. And, and you choose what type of graph you want. And this is what I want you to use. Okay? I, I wanted to show you how to draw, but Look at all the stuff you'd have to figure out. You'd have to rotate your text and draw it this way and, you know, a lot of work. This also takes into account the size of your view based on the device. So it will draw it scaled up to an, uh, a tablet or a, a phone or whatever. So it's really nice. It's used in a lot of applications. And it's all written in Java. You can... Uh, you download this Java file, this library called a jar file, and you put that in your project and you import the package and it's pretty simple to do. So I should be able to cover that tomorrow in one in one day. Isn't that pretty? It's beautiful, man. Uh, they had some more they have good tutorials. You can you can look at the tutorials on how to use it. But I'll, I'll be going through it with our particular application here. So all kinds of different charts you can do with it. Gives you the code sample, how to do it. Basically, that's, that's what you do. One, one line of code. Pardon me? That's not the Android way at all. I know that co that's contrary to... Uh, what we've done so far, right? So uh, the, the hardest part would be reading the data, which we've already done, and putting it into a, a s collection that they need, and then passing it to their chart drawer. So all right, any other questions?